Um, welcome, uh, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to be here. Uh, what I would like to, uh, to say before starting is that uh, this uh, presentation will be uh, recorded. So if you have uh, any problem with it, uh, please, uh, please tell us. Um, and the presentation will be published on the Eurogeo uh, site. So um, I'm Muriel Lux from Mercator Ocean International. And uh, Audrey, my colleague uh, who has prepared this uh, presentation is uh, from Mercator Ocean International as well. And is, she's leading the GeoBlue Planet uh, uh, EU office. Um, next slide. Okay, so we are about to, to talk about uh, sustainability of coastal ocean services. So the sessions aim at understanding the need for sustained coastal services. Uh, from the Copernicus Marine Service to national and private service providers in Europe and globally. Um, the objective is to give an overview uh, of some key European service providers, to discuss uh, their contribution at the local, national and regional levels, and to provide uh, guidance for the program of an up upcoming workshop. So the floor uh, will be open to questions at the end of uh, all presentations uh, and during the round table. Um, uh, so I uh, would like to rem remind to the speakers to keep the, your presentation uh, short so, so that we can have some questions after, after a while. Uh, and then uh, if uh, I raise my hand is that we have to, to uh, to run a bit. Next slide. Well, we will have uh, uh, four uh, presentation today. Uh, Gada El Serafi from Delta Res uh, cannot join uh, because uh, of uh, illness today, so it's cancelled. Um, first, I will um, start uh, with a brief presentation of the Copernicus Marine Service, uh, the Copernicus Coastal Hub, and the Marine Forum, and then. Um, uh, we will have the presentation of Andrea uh, Taramedi from uh, ISPRA about this, the member state vision of this service. Uh, then uh, Marion Sutton uh, will present um, detecting and forecasting Sargassum, which is a, a project uh, much uh, more uh, um, at national scale. And then Pedro Ribeiro uh, will present Next Ocean, uh, a, a project uh, dealing with the next generation fishing and aquaculture services. And uh, we will have the, the roundtable discussion uh, with, with a question and then open question from the audience. Well, uh, I'm going to start with the Copernicus Marine Service. So what is the Copernicus Marine Service for this for this session, uh, it is a, a sustainable service uh, in support to coastal services. Next slide. Sorry. So yeah, you can go next slide. Well, the Copernicus Marine Service, I said it's a, a sustainable service uh, since it has been uh, implemented for uh, uh, several years. It has been implemented in 2014 by Mercator Ocean International and the partners. Uh, it's uh, uh, accessible uh, through this uh, web portal, marine.copernicus.eu, and it provides a huge quantity of uh, uh, satellite in situ observation and 3D model for uh, essential variables uh, that are uh, check, uh, quality checked and uh, delivered uh, under the shape of data or indicators. We also provide trainings and uh, uh, powerful user support to, uh, uh, to accompany uh, our users. And we have now more than uh, 55,000 of subscribers. Next slide. Uh, in brief, uh, the Copernicus Marine Service uh, uh, offer uh, include uh, global and regional ocean monitoring and forecasting uh, information. We provide uh, uh, observation, as I mentioned, and numerical model that uh, uh, assimilates uh, those observations. We provide data set that are multi-year, real-time, and forecast uh, information. 
And for the, all the essential marine variables that are the, what we call the blue ocean for the physics, the white ocean for the sea ice system, and the green ocean for the biogeochemistry. We are closely working with the Copernicus Space and Institute component, and uh, we provide uh, the, um, all these data over the globe at global scale, but also at regional scale with, with the area uh, that are uh, illustrated here. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned, we have observation product, model product. The access to the product are free and open to anybody. It is based on a cloud cloud-based uh, infrastructure, the marine data store. Each data set, each product is uh, uh, accompanied by a description, a user manual of the product, a quality information documents to help the users. And uh, through our service desk, we can um, support, support any um, user in, 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 the, in the use of, uh, of the data. Next slide. Well, in brief, um, the 21, for the 21-28 period, the Copernicus Marine Service is an ambition plan aligned with the EU Green Deal and the digital strategy to remain a marine reference worldwide and to foster user uptake. The ambition is to maintain the sustainability of this service with uh, incremental evolution driven by users and policy needs. The relationship uh, with uh, user and policy is really important. Uh, and this requires the sustainability of the service and all the downstream service that are developed uh, um, around. Uh, we want to reinforce the link with the uh, governance, the member states. And we do this uh, through the Marine Forum. I will say a word uh, just after. We want to start the coastal extension of the service with the, the member state. <clears throat> so the coastal downstream service are very important and must, must be uh, sustainable for that. We want to <clears throat> reinforce the synergies with the other Copernicus services and Emonet. And we do this uh, uh, through the thematic hub, I would say a word just after. And then the objective is to embrace the new capabilities of uh, all digital services in synergy with the digital twin of the ocean and the Destination Earth initiatives. Um, the least but not uh, the last but not least, <clears throat> we prepare the post 2024 evolutions through our service evolution innovation activities. And uh, one of the presentation uh, just after is one of these uh, projects. And we are also involved in the H2020 and Horizon Europe programs to, to facilitate this evolution of the service. Next slide. Now I will uh, say a word about the national collaboration program. Next slide. Okay. Well, um, what we call the national collaboration program as a context, um, the context to, uh, it was a need to better support the EU uh, member and contributing state activities to improve uh, the Copernicus marine data uptake at national level, to develop joint work with Copernicus marine and EU member and collaborative states, and to better understand each national context and expectation because there are sub, uh, numerous. Uh, for the moment, the, the priority is focused on the coastal ocean uh, with the, the, the plan to improve coastal zone monitoring with new product, new modeling system, much more synergies, the improvement of the, the existing uh, modeling system. And we want to co-design and co-produce with member states um, and through the interfaces uh, with Copernicus Marine Service all coastal modeling system that can contribute to the to the marine service. Next slide. In the frame of this national collaboration program, we have uh, three objectives and two implementation phases. So the objectives is to reinforce the downscaling collaboration with national marine coastal monitoring activities to support EU member and collaborating states with the implementation of EU uh, policies and uh, directives, 
and to support as well the transnational collaboration for coastal monitoring activities. We have two implementation phases. Uh, the first one um, we have select for the first one we have selected uh, 15 projects, uh, coastal projects uh, that started uh, in July 2023. Um, These uh, projects are existing coastal modeling system that we want to support to enter an operational phase for the Copernicus Marine Service. So it's a, a kind of proof of concept. And there will be a phase two um, uh, that will start in 2025, but the call for tender will be uh, published uh, next year to, to go on with this, uh, sorry, <laughs> to go on with this, uh, this uh, project. Now I would like to say a word about the, the Marine Forum. Okay, what is the National Marine Stakeholder Forum? It's a consultative instance that we created in uh, November 2022. The objective, it's the same, is to foster deeper interaction with member states uh, to better uh, understand the needs uh, and uh, the assets and their expectation. We want to co-design and implement action with member states in the coastal marine areas. Um, and the expected outcomes, it, this co-design of, uh, of coastal marine service uh, with national entities. And we want to help to improve our proposition for the Copernicus User Forum as well and the Space Program Committee. Next slide. Uh, actually, we have uh, in the Marine Forum uh, 17 EU member and, and contributing states as a, as a member. We have two meetings per year where, where we discuss uh, needs and uh, uh, what will be the action. We will have also some working group uh, uh, from the end of this year. Uh, we have made a survey about the coastal modeling systems and so on. So it's a quite interesting uh, uh, um, mind forum. And if your country is not in the blue <laughs> countries, you can contact us to see how to proceed to join. <clears throat> Next slide. Now uh, I will finish with the Copernicus Coastal Thematic Hub. Next slide. So what is the Coastal Thematic Hub? It's a DGDF's uh, initiatives to enable new and existing users to take advantage of the full Copernicus offer. Uh, the Coastal Thematic Hub is not uh, alone. There, for the moment, there, there, is, uh, there are uh, four um, thematic hubs uh, to be uh, developed. The Coastal, the Arctic, the Health, and the Energy. Uh, Mercator Ocean is the interested entity for the implementation of the coastal and the Arctic hub. Uh, the coastal hub is already um, available at this address as a proof of concept. Um, it includes uh, thematic product, uh, thematic product uh, coming from the different Copernicus services and um, um, dedicated to the coastal zone. Next slide. The idea of the, this thematic hub is to uh, facilitate the access to data and um, um, be, in being a thematic, uh, we expect that it would be simpler to have a fit for purpose the data, the relevant product and not a huge catalog in which you, don't, you cannot find the, which one is the, the most relevant for your application. Uh, it is uh, really focused on EU policies. Um, the idea is to facilitate the use at national and local scale, the use of Copernicus, to cross fertilize between Copernicus service and uh, to facilitate the thematic collection of needs and gaps. Next slide. So uh, to finish is the transverse thematic window across all Copernicus service and ground segments. This is implemented uh, through collaboration with DGDFIS, uh, the interested entities, and KCEO. And uh, we can find on this uh, website also a selection of use cases throughout the Copernicus use case and uh, dedicated user support. In conclusion, <clears throat> so the, the Copernicus Marine Service and its related initiatives is a sustainable service implemented to support the development of sustainable coastal services. 
It offers ocean information uh, necessary to feed coastal services, coastal interface. Uh, it supports such interface through uh, its national collaboration program and the related user engagement call for tenders. It evolves uh, thanks to its service evolution program and uh, associated call for tenders as well. And uh, it evolves following a user-driven approach and uh, enlarge uh, every year the, the communities of users to uh, member states, uh, policy stakeholders, and, and so on. And the idea is to be the most relevant for the future to help national uh, stakeholders. That's it for me. Thank you. Now, um, Andrea, if you want to to present, uh, maybe, um, yeah, we we yes, we have prepared some kind of uh, generic question, but I cannot uh, pop me a question. But the idea is to ask to each of the <clears throat> speaker what is. <clears throat> uh, how how to see the future of uh, of the the project he present uh, in terms of sustainability? For me, we are sustainable, so I won't answer the the the, the project. But now, I will let the floor to Andrea to to present uh, the member state view uh, of this. Thank you. I can use this. Okay. So, uh, thanks uh, to Mercator Ocean International for inviting me. So, I will present uh, uh, the member state vision. It's, uh, you know, it's talked by the Italian point of view, but it's, you know, discussed with like uh, most of the other member states that are sitting in the Copernicus Committee and the User Forum. So, uh, as was presented, uh, we all uh, agree that Copernicus, and in this case, the uh, Marine Environmental Monitoring uh, Services, is a successful story. But it's still missing uh, the last mile because uh, it was presented that there's, uh, you know, subscribers and users. But uh, one of the major issues of all Copernicus services is the fact that the real end user are not yet there. So the point is, what is the member state view? We have to bring to the use of data and information of all the services, in this case of uh, uh, the Marine One and the Cost Lab One, the real users. So the people that really don't have, uh, let's say, a clue on what is Copernicus and how he produces information, but they are interested in the information. So this is something that is also stated in clear uh, way from the European Court that said that Copernicus is a very successful program, but still is not uh, in the last you know, mile of the uptake. We still miss the real uptake. So the member state vision is that. So member state has set up what is the national user forum. So it's a European law and the European law state that member state has to build a national Copernicus user forum to do what? To disseminate, to collect, to stimulate a qualified, authoritative, and coordinated national uptake of all services. So in this case, we are you know, keen to support also Mercator Ocean in the Marine Forum. So we delegate the person that is coordinating the national working table of coastal and marine areas to discuss with Mercator the evolution. And of course, you know, the, the major issues is to support what is the real user-driven approach with respect to national and European space-based development. Member state doesn't want an evolution of uh, Copernicus services that is leaded by technology. So it has to be leaded by user-driven approach because the European regulation is stating that. So which are the user-driven needs that has to be solved? So in, in this, whoops, sorry. We have, uh, and uh, I'm going to focus on the coastal areas, there's, uh, uh, let's say, what by a white paper, a long-term strategy made by the European level, so the, um, uh, the entrusted entities in this case were Mercator Ocean and the EA, how to have a roadmap for the evolution of Copernicus marine and land services to better serve coastal users. So that was a sort of proposition made by the European level, and member states organized themselves because coastal areas topics are really transversal to all the services. So you have 
data and information that are coming from the, the CMEMS and uh, uh, land services, but they are also coming from the C3S, that is climate for the emergency, and from other like uh, entrusted entities and like uh, operational services or so security and atmosphere. When we talk about coastal areas, we are talking about like a very complex area. So we have data and information that are coming from all the six Copernicus core services. So in this case, cost complication are mainly left to the downstream sector. This is the major issues in the member state point of view. When you go to coastal, you are dealing with like member state and downstream sector. So it's crystal clear that member state do not want European Union having, you know, digging into coastal problems with products that can, you know, can be overlapping or in contrast with something that is already developed at national and local and regional level. So the point of view is really we have to find a, a threshold and a, collabor a strong collaboration where you know the boundary conditions are coming from the marine environmental monitoring system and the downstream sector is really developed at national and local level. So in Italy, we have set up a roadmap to make sustained Copernicus uptake for delivering products in coastal areas. So it, you can see that it was a long way. And in this long way, we have uh, involved the core services, but also all the national users to produce uh, first a uh, white paper with other member states uh, at the uh, European level and a national position paper that is dealing what is already delivered at national level, what is the gap, and what is the evolution that national authorities and national users really want as an evolution. So you see that you have input from European level, input from national level, and of course, input from users levels, also the intermediate users. So in this uh, roadmap, uh, member state of uh, uh, the Med7, that is all the Mediterranean uh, member state plus Portugal, have set a, a white paper that was presented at the council at European level saying that uh, for the blue economy and the Mediterranean Sea and beyond, what is what is what it was really needed was a coastal hub. And that was presented during also the French presidency of the uh, council. And this has leaded a uh, very strong support to the creation of what we have called the coastal hub. So dealing with like the implementation of the European Green Deal and the implementation of the blue economy. So the point was like producing data, information, and then knowledge and action. So which are the framework directive that can be, let's say, implemented at national level based on the coastal, you know, thematic hub information that are delivered from the European level. And I will close with a, a, a slide in order to clarify this point. So the white paper and the coastal initiative has, uh, let's say, more or less four main message. First, is uh, sharing coastal data and information for use and reuse, not to produce again and again data and information that are already available. So measure once and use many times. So the Coastal Thematic Hub has this major goal from a member state perspective. Of course, find also an easy way to access the data. Also at Copernicus level, at European level, is not always so straightforward where to get the data and uh, which are the, the last available data and so on. So what member states are asking is a very easy way of accessing the data. Of course, the other you know, main message was from all these member states was harmonization of local coastal products across member states. Of course, what is produced in Italy maybe has some you know, differences between what is produced in France and Spain and whatever. So there's a need of an harmonization. And then uh, identification of user need, starting from institutional market. Copernicus is, was born for institutional users first, and then we can go to the market. So which are the major issues for institutional users that can be solved? So member state wants that the user forum, national user forum, and the you know, European user forum is really taken into account for the Copernicus evolution of the services. In this case, you know, the Marine Forum is uh, a piece of this cake. And of course, a call for action. 
really the white paper was asking for setting up a Copernicus coastal thematic app. So in this case, I'm always underlined that a bottom-up approach for member state was really supportive to Mercator Ocean to have a strong support from member state to create this thematic app. That is not an overlapping, but it's something that has to be a, let's say, a simplified way of having all this information. And of course, to do that, in Italy, we have started to have a national position paper on coastal areas. So while uh, the Med7 highlight the importance of knowledge-based approach, there's a real need to understand what is available and what is already under development at national level. So we have created a national position paper. The working table of the coastal user forum is made almost by 120 end user that are you know, bringing experience. I'm not going to details. In the presentation that they will leave, you have some slide for these details, but we have done a survey. I'm an institutional user involved in the Mirror Copernicus, survey aimed at participants to the coastal discussion group, and of course, finding what is the offer that is already available also from the industry perspective, because there's a lot of things that are already developed also in the industrial market that has to be taken into account. So what is you know, the gap between the offer and the needs of the, uh, of the user? So institution research, but also commercial entities that are participating to that. And this is delivered to Mercator Ocean, but also to all the member states in order to verify which are the things that are under development. And uh, this is the last slide, but before going in details of the last slide, it's really important to understand that when we talk about users, we are not talking about intermediate user, that they already know what is a coastal product and so on in terms of like satellite and so on. The real user are people that are using the information, not the data. So the uptake will be done only when he has no clue about what is the you know, data behind the information will be used. And this is a practical example. Italy is really supportive of what is the ocean state report that Mercator Ocean is delivering. And this is important to clearly define roles in, in this case of implementing the Marine Strategy Framework Directive. So what is things that has to be you know, supported from European level and what has not to be because it's not useful. So data catalog is something that is really useful in the, uh, in the implementation of Marine Strategy Framework Directive. The general overview of marine basin features and trends, this is very important because a national level and local level cannot deliver this type of information. But then when you go into the implementation of marine uh, framework uh, directive, the process information layers tailored to the implementation of the framework directive cannot be done by the European level because there's accountability from national authorities. If you go in that direction, this can generate confusion and who is taking the decision. And this is important because uh, we have uh, participated with like several entities with like Horizon and uh, H2020 also with Mercator producing very good proof of concept. But when you go to operation, the proof of concept has to change to what is an operation. So it's not any longer a research. It's something that is binding to decision that national civil protection or other entrusted entities at national level has to take decision. And this cannot be done from a research perspective. So it's a change of paradigm. So if you really want, and the member state view, if you really want operation using data information from the European level, you have to find a very clear boundary position where you know, the boundary conditions are set at European level, but the decisions are made at national level. Thanks. I don't know if there are questions or... Um, yes, the, the question of sustainability is not, uh, about sustainability is not uh, maybe uh, adequate. <laughs> But uh, thank you for this uh, presentation. It's uh, quite interesting to to have this uh, vision of the distribution of tasks, and uh, maybe we could discuss that. Uh, okay. Thank you.
Um, now, um, Marion, uh, Marion Sutton from CLS will present uh, detecting and forecasting Sargasso. Marion, are you online? Good morning, everyone. Hello. Hello. You, you, you can proceed. Okay. So, okay. So you're sharing the, the, the slides. Yes. Okay. Uh, so good morning. Uh, I'm Marianne Sutton from uh, CLS France, uh, and I will now um, uh, tell you the story of the development of a service on detecting and forecasting Sargasso. So please, next uh, next uh, slide. Um, uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, all right, so Sargasso, um, Sargasso is a, it's a problem that has occurred uh, since uh, more than 10 years now in the Caribbean. Um, so before that, before 2011, there was not much Sargasso in the Caribbean. Uh, but now, uh, since 2011, we have seen a huge Sargasso mass trending um, in the Caribbean region, in West African countries and the Gulf of Mexico. And these uh, strandings have strong societal and environmental impacts. Next slide, please. Um, just to uh, give you an overview of the, um, of the users that are impacted by this uh, Sargassum influx. So you have the public authorities uh, who have the mandates in public beach management and public health management in charge of cleaning the beaches and monitor the H2S concentration. Uh, the tourism sector is also impacted um, as the Sargassum ruins the visual aspect of beaches and users for nautical activities. And tourism is a key source of revenue for most countries uh, in this area. Uh, fisheries uh, can also be uh, impacted as fishermen can be trapped in port by the Sargassum. Um, the operation uh, and safety uh, at sea uh, can be also, um, Sargassum can be a problem for, for this uh, uh, domain uh, as small size vessels can be trapped uh, in the Sargassum mats. The sailing boats in sailing races are also um, uh, used to, to deal with the Sargassum, but it can um, uh, occur some uh, uh, some difficulties for them. Uh, but at the contrary, you also have other type of users looking for the information on the Sargassum um, for either valorization. So there's a, a lot of development around collecting Sargassum uh, to try to valorize it. Uh, and uh, the, the Sargassum floating Sargassum offers the wildlife protection uh, when it's floating at sea. Next slide, please. Um, so, to, so regarding considering, considering all these um, these users and, and needs, there is a need to monitor the situation of the Sargassum at Atlantic Basin and island scales. Uh, and for this, the satellite technologies and the drift models are key tools to help the mitigation. Uh, it anticipates, it helps to anticipate the size and the timing of influxes uh, of the Sargassum to correctly size the responses. Next slide, please. Um, so how did we um, uh, come out with the with the with this service? So we initially started with the uh, two founding projects. Um, first one supported by the ESA uh, in the frame of the EO Science for Society uh, call, open call. And uh, during this uh, this first project, we the objective was to valorize the satellite data to answer a need from the society. And we developed the SAM tool service, the SAM tool system, SAM tool for Sargasson monitoring. Um, so in this uh, SAM tool system, we valorize the satellite data from um, a lot of uh, space agencies, uh, many, uh, many different satellites. We finally used six satellite sensors, including medium and high, res high resolution sensors to detect the Sargasson at sea. Uh, coupled with the drift model, uh, it allows us to, uh, to, to forecast the trajectory of the Sargasson for the next five days. And all this information was provided or is provided to the user. Uh, through an operational and scalable service. Now, the second uh, project, if you, uh, next slide, please. Um, so the, the second founding project uh, is the E-Shape Eurogeo Showcase project, which started approximately at the same time. And in, the, in this project, we, um, 
we we were looking for uh, expanding the user community um, to scale up the system from a service from an operational to a seasonal planning system. So thanks thanks to the eShape project, uh, we expanded our, our com communication and co-design actions with the users uh, and expanding the use of the system. And so since 2019, we had more than 60 users of the system in more than 12 countries. So as you can see on the uh, right, you have a list of, of these communities, uh, of different communities of users, and you can see that there are different type of users. Um, and uh, from half of them, you, you find um, um, a good component of uh, users from university and scientists, but also needs from um, private companies for collection at sea or for management of the, of the problematic uh, at um, a coastal level. Next slide, please. So after uh, these two uh, founding projects, um, we the conclusion of these two projects was that we could define two different types of users and two different types of needs from the, the, the communities, from the end users. Uh, the first um, real, use, real need is really to, uh, to support the international public sector by sharing the satellite detection products with the scientific communities to, um, to, to help the, the research projects on, on, the, on the topic. Um, and uh, this should be uh, uh, sponsored by, uh, by the, the Copernicus Marine Service and the CNES. And we actually have two projects ongoing now uh, to, to fill this, uh, this gap. Um, so the SOTA project, which is within the uh, Copernicus Service Evolution Frame, uh, in which we are improving the Sargassum operational detection algorithm. Uh, and the second project, uh, which is um, uh, in the frame of the Space Climate Observatory, the school, financed by the CNES, uh, and in which we are um, entering a phase of uh, sharing the satellite data produced by CLS, uh, and to share it with the scientific communi community through a web portal such as Aviso or the GeoBlue Planet Sargassum Hub. Uh, and in this CSAM project, we also will work on operationally operationalization of the seasonal forecast, uh, which will be produced by uh, the IRD. Next slide. Um, and to complete this offer uh, to the other end of the end user, uh, there's also a need to support operational actions for Sargassum management with, with the SAM tool, with, so with the commercial uh, commercial system, um, because you still have people and, um, and users needed to anticipate the Sargassum influx and landing for coastal management and cleaning operation. Um, you have also private companies looking at localized Sargassum mat at sea for collection and valorization. Uh, or uh, willing to estimate the amount of sargassum for valorization. So this is the same tool here in this case would support the development of the private sector. And to conclude in the next slide, please. Um, so to conclude, the, the sargassum uh, forecasting service um, is, uh, is a real need from the society. And in this case, the Earth observation data is a key tool uh, to, to answer this problem. Um, it really allows to valorize the space data to answer a real need from the society. Uh, but there's a need to support two different types of users, uh, the public and the scientific sectors through the international and European action. Uh, and also the need to answer the different needs from the private sectors uh, with adapting some, uh, some, uh, some private services. And uh, thank you for uh, listening. Uh, thank you, Marion. Um, thank you for this uh, brilliant uh, presentation. And uh, I, I would have a, a question regarding the sustainability of this service, this very useful service and needed service. Uh, yep. You mentioned several the uh, next step, but how how what what is for you the 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 best way to sustain such service? Okay, thank you, Marion. Um, yeah, as I, I mentioned in my last slide, so we really identified two different needs uh, for this, uh, for accessing the, the, the data on the Sargassum monitoring. Uh, and I think that, uh, or we think that um, um, to answer these two different types of needs, there is two different types of sustainability uh, that needs to be, uh, um, to be um, uh, taken. 
and for uh, providing the, the, the data, open data to scientists. Uh, this should be probably integrated in Copernicus Mine Services or um, uh, equivalent services uh, to allow the, the wide, uh, the large scientific community to access the data and to, to provide researchers. But still, uh, to, um, uh, to answer the needs from the user, uh, from the, the commercial users, um, we think that CLS as a private company should uh, be providing some um, added value services uh, to the final end users. So maybe just to uh, um, to continue on the, 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 the talks from, from Andrea, uh, I think there's a, a thin threshold between uh, what the Copernicus services or coastal services will offer to the uh, real end users and where do you define the, the, the limit or the, the how do you agree or how do you work with private companies that will also or that are, are already providing some, uh, some services to the, to the end users. Okay, so Today, yeah, we think that it's the, for the it's the private company. Today are um, are willing to provide services to the people wanting to to do some some business with the service. Okay, thank you, Marion. Uh, now I uh, would like to to call um, um, Pedro um, Ribeiro uh, to join uh, to, to come to the scene and to present. Uh, the next presentation is the next ocean. Earth Observation Service for Sustainable Fishing and Aquaculture. Okay, uh, thanks, Muriel. Thanks for inviting me, my Kato, to this session. Uh, I'm going to present this project, uh, uh, which is very connected to the, the theme of this session, the sustainability, the commercial sustainability of these services. Uh, but I will start with a uh, previous project because uh, the, we uh, actually were a part of E-Shape project, which was just mentioned by, by uh, Mahion. Uh, within E-Shape, uh, uh, Demos, uh, which is my company, we were leading the water showcase with uh, seven different pilot applications. Uh, and we benefit a lot from E-Shape's co-design framework. It was really, really a very interesting experience. It allowed us to uh, understand much better the requirements and how, how to approach stakeholders, different types of stakeholders. Uh, also, the sustainability and communication uh, actions from E-Shape were uh, very important to uh, for the outreach and to create more awareness for, with, for the type of uh, services that we were providing in the showcase. On the other hand, uh, different experience uh, of the different pilots that we had in the showcase uh, raised some, some, some issues, like uh, the use of the DS platforms was a bit complicated a lot of times and not reliable enough for an operational service. And, and also a lot of these uh, services in the showcases were using sensitive data, in situ data or data that is provided by national authorities and this is quite complicated to manage. Uh, so this was the experience in E-Shape. Uh, and from that experience, we decided to upscale these uh, services that Demos was developing, were services related to fishing activities. Uh, we decided to incorporate that in a new project, which is called Next Ocean. So Next Ocean is a age 2020 project that was funded and initiated in 2021. And we have a set of uh, different partners with different profiles. Uh, and the main objective is to develop, uh, co-develop in developing together with the users, uh, this uh, set of uh, earth observation based services to support fisheries in aquaculture. Uh, and all of that in a very commercial oriented uh, perspective. Uh, so that's the idea that we would uh, enable these uh, decision makers to make the, to use the services and to actually push purchase these uh, added valued services. And how to do that? Uh, we did uh, we built a marketplace uh, to host all all the services from different service providers. And what you can see here is a very, very short summary. Of course, I could go in much more details about the services and about how they are being developed, but uh, I don't, in the interest of time, I'm just showing here what is the marketplace. It's already available, so you can now access it and it will provide a lot of different information and you can get credentials for it and uh, start experimenting with the services. Uh, 
We have uh, three services oriented to, for fisheries. One is characterization of fishing areas, which is largely based on Copernicus Marine Services data. And then we have fish provenance and eco-labeling, uh, which is based in AES data. And fish there is monitoring surveillance, which is to oriented to detect uh, illegal fishing. And then on the aquaculture, we have monitoring of aquaculture structures, also using radar data. Uh, site risk assessment, which provides a lot of uh, met ocean data and also oil spill the statistics. And fish farm impacts, which provides a drift model to understand uh, how the uh, any any litter that we, or any pollution that is resultant from aquaculture uh, operations, how it will uh, move in the sea and what it will impact. And uh, since this is uh, uh, the the session today is about uh, uh, value, about uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, I want to highlight this aspect of the project because we have a, a two ways to send a, a value proposition in the project. From one side, of course, the consumers have access to uh, a set of uh, different services in our one place, you know, and they can get all this information, which is all validated, and uh, you have accuracy estimates, and you have all the associated information about the services uh, in a competitive price and even bundle different services together. And for the service providers, also the marketplace offers a quick way to, to publish their services and, and market, market them and uh, uh, making it available for the market. Uh, and in a way, reached uh, a new set of users in a global scale. All of that is done in an automatic fashion, so using electronic forms, and it should be quite an easy process to integrate. And this is a, was a quite challenging, so we were, of course, relying on different uh, techniques, different methods. For sure, co-design was a, a fundamental element of this project. Uh, it, since the project started in 2021, you can imagine it was largely affected by COVID. So we had to rapidly adjust to uh, online environment for co-design, which is, comes with a lot of challenges, but also comes with some advantages in terms of reach. You can actually uh, reach out to users that are far away. So it's quite interesting. It kind of changed the, the scale that the project was aiming to, to, to focus. We were initially aimed at focusing on Europe, and now we have a global focus, uh, largely due to these problems with COVID. And then, of course, you have integrations platform, and this is quite a technological uh, aspect of the project. You have this uh, uh, Earth observation exploitation platforms with different models that allows for integrating data and services and actually operate them in a very uh, automatic fashion. And from the value proposition part, uh, we had one partner, which was an economics school, which was really bringing this uh, value creation wheel. It's a set of techniques to drive the, the innovation and to create value from these new products. Uh, but I want to highlight some challenges that uh, from this experience, uh, which I think are quite important for the topics that we're discussing here today. And, and if we're talking about sustainability of uh, uh, coastal services, we, we, we need to understand a lot of different uh, issues that can affect this. So considering the technical framework, uh, uh, as soon as you start talking to users, you perceive the limitations from Earth observations. Of course, and I'm talking here about resolution, revisit time, or uh, I can give examples, for instance, for vessel detection for uh, illegal fishing, radar data works very well, on, but the revisit time is not enough for a complete monitoring. So it, it, it puts us in a, strange position to have to justify the services and probably uh, the services cannot fulfill the whole expectations from the users. On the other side, uh, to maintain an operational service in a cloud infrastructure uh, at, the, at every time, at every uh, with no fails, it's quite challenging. You, have, you actually need an operations team in, in, in alert, let's say, in easy to, to assess and easy to support the services. Uh, it comes, of course, together with a help desk support, so it goes beyond just the technical operations, but it, you also have to have people that have a lot of knowledge about the services, about the issues that these services are addressing, so that they can answer these, these users. 
Then we, when we talk about the business models, there's also a lot of different uh, issues to think. Uh, we start about thinking of target, target customers. So there is this, I, I've heard a couple of times already in this conference, this discussion about going to the end users or, or going to the intermediate users that will integrate your solutions in, a, in, a, in their own framework, in their own uh, technical solution. It is for sure two different markets and you kind of have to make a decision at some point to go to intermediate use, users and instead of going for in directly to end users. And that's kind of the way we went. On the other hand, the legal framework, and I'm talking about a partnership here, which should go beyond uh, 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 the project that's being funded by the commission. Uh, of course, the partnership should go uh, after the project. It should continue. This should become a, a legal entity, and you have to put in place this agreement between uh, these partners that have very different commercial interests, which a lot of times are competitive between them. So it's quite challenging. And the cost and pricing models are also quite difficult to, to understand. If you're talking about innovative uh, services, there is not much base to compare. So you cannot really base your pricing models on market research. You, you need to discuss this with users. And of course, you need to consider the cost structure, which in some cases is quite hard. Uh, it's my slide, last slide. Uh, uh, I, just to give an example, the AES data is quite hard uh, to, to uh, precise the cost that you have for depending on the, the, the request that you make. So this does affects the price of the services. Uh, and finally, that's the main one to bridge the gap between these uh, potential buyers and the uh, service providers. And this is, has a lot to do with co-design, but actually goes beyond that because we are here talking about sales. So you also need to understand the operation, how you need to deliver the services and the frequency, the value, all of that has to be defined. And of course, this starts with the use cases definition. Co-design methods, like I said before, was uh, largely affected by COVID. So there's a lot of room here to evolve. I think the, with large language models, now we have an opportunity also to have automatic collection of user requirements, which we didn't have before. So we should start thinking about this. And uh, finally, uh, this relates to what uh, uh, Marion commented in her presentation, uh, the market segmentation and the funding options. You need to think if you're going to the public sector, if you're going to the private sector, or you're actually doing other uh, type of, uh, look for other options for funding. I'm sorry, I had this last one with service customization. Uh, we start with the marketplace concept, but it's very hard to have services that are one size fits all. So every time you talk to the users, there's some uh, degree of customization required and you have to try to accommodate that within your uh, project, within your services. And this is not always possible depending on how much you need to customize. And that's a wrap, thanks. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for this uh, presentation. And um, you're right, it's uh, interesting that you mention uh, also the tools because we don't only talk about data and uh, uh, the services uh, usually that it's not only data, it's uh, it, uh, integrated or diagnostics or uh, answer to a, a problem. So, and sometimes this is a tool to exploit the data. So thank you. And uh, regarding uh, these uh, activities, the next ocean uh, uh, project, what would be the next step in terms of sustainability? Uh, indeed, this is a big discussion. We have uh, two thirds of the project already gone now. So we are going for the last uh, last uh, year. When, uh, for instance, the, what I said about the uh, service segmentation or customization, it's, that's the time to work on that. So our last year will be dedicated to one-to-one -one, uh, meetings and, and, and work with different uh, customers to actually try to provide something that's useful and brings a lot of value and then can become a commercial service. That's the main goal, to, to keep running the marketplace with commercial services that we foresee that uh, we will have to do a lot of customization in order to do that. Because a lot of the... the, the um, Concepts we had in the in the beginning of the of the project they proved not to be 
the best. So a lot of times we shift from one main target customer to other target customers. As, a, as an example, we are thinking of having our fishermen as customers for fishing uh, services. It is quite challenging. On the other hand, certificators of fishers are much easier to approach and they can actually see the value. So it's about customizing and, and keeping the, the marketplace running as a commercial service. Okay, thank you. Uh, now it's uh, time to have the, the panel uh, discussion. Maybe Pedro and uh, Andrea, if you want to join uh, at the table. So uh, we will have first uh, maybe um, a few uh, dedicated questions. Maybe uh, Audrey, if you are online, if you have a question to ask to to Pedro, uh, Marion, and uh, and Andrea. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, and after that, uh, the, the question uh, will be open to the audience. So if you have question about the presentation or uh, any question you can have about the, the Costa service, you, you, will, you, you will be able to, to copy. Okay. Thank you, Audrey. Great, thank you, Muriel. Can you just uh, go to the next slide, if you don't mind? Ah. Mm, I have no next slide. Okay, then it's not updated. It's it's fine. No worries. Uh, so I I just want to uh, thank you first for uh, moderating moderating for me because I couldn't uh, make it all the way to to Bolzano today, and I want to thank also all the speakers. Of course, you included Muriel for uh, giving us a really good overview of the activities and really um, how this answered the need for sustained uh, coastal services from the Copernicus Marine all the way to national and uh, the private sector. I think it was re really interesting uh, what we could hear also about the different users uh, from you know the, the higher level all the way to intermediate and uh, all the way to uh, uh, end users and uh, com commercial use. Uh, the first question uh, is for you, Muriel. I don't know if uh, maybe you want to join uh, Andrea and Pedro uh, on the panel. I can only see the, the two speakers, perfect. Um, so I guess, uh, Muriel, you know, since you're working for Copernicus and uh, uh, through Mercato, and uh, we're talking about uh, um, higher level uh, users, like, you know, uh, um, national countries uh, working for uh, maritime, spatial planning or national adaptation plans. And my question uh, goes, uh, these mar maritime spatial planning requires data beyond the marine service. Can you please tell us a bit more about how Copernicus can provide in a sustainable way uh, the data needed for MSP beyond the physical boundaries? Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Audrey, for the question. It's a very it's a difficult question. Uh, actually, in maritime spatial planning is one of the European directives, and for me, it's the the end of all the directive because it must include all all the constraint of all services and all the socio-economic uh, uh, challenge and all the environmental challenge. So, this is an objective. I'm not sure the Copernicus Marine Service can answer this <laughs> this question uh, uh, alone, but we have to think about this special planning to help member states to have the good data and the downstream service to have the good data to be able to combine uh, all of this uh, information uh, to support the decision maker because decision maker, they don't want to exploit data. They want answers. They want to have some diagnostics, some indicators, and then to combine them to have an answer. So. For me, this maritime special planning is the, the the last goal, the last objective of all of this. And uh, it's not so simple. And uh, I guess that uh, we will be able to discuss with all the community to make our service interoperable so that the, everything can be uh, combined and help. Thank you, Mariela. Yeah, thank you. I think you're right, and I heard it in the previous um, presentations as well. It, it all goes down to the co-design to transform the, the amazing data we have available into information that is usable by states and, uh, and various users. The next question goes to uh, Andrea. How do the coastal roadmaps that you presented meet the user needs and aim to provide sustainable services at the local to national levels, please? 
So thanks for the question. As I was uh, already presenting, you know, member state has uh, looked to the uh, roadmap and I've started a, a gap analysis on what uh, is covering and what has to be delivered and, uh, you know, developed. So in order to have a sustainable, uh, you know, uh, implementation of the coastal roadmap, it's really important that, uh, uh, you know, the marine services is really looking to what are the, let's say, national white paper showing what is already at national level and what is really missing. As you were saying, you know, for sustainable services, it's really important not to overlap what is already, you know, uh, present at national level. If you have a, a coastal uh, thematic area, you really have to figure it out what are the real end user. I'm always underlying that because I think there's a lot of confusion in that. Users are the ones that really need the information. Intermediate user, and these are you know the, the most uh, higher number for all the entrusted entities, are uh, sort of like providers. So for a sustainable of the or sustainability of the services uh, and of the implementation, it's really important to move forward, shifting from intermediate user that you still have to keep to the real end user. This is not yet done. For a sustainability of the services, this is the thing that the uptake strategies has to take into account. And this is really important. I add another issues. As you may know, the member states are really, let's say, nasty to the European Commission because the uptake strategies, it's very unclear. We don't agree on the fact that the uptake is taken let's say, only on predominantly by USPA. It's really important that uh, entrusted entities that are delivering the services really work with member state uh, in the uptake strategies. Otherwise, it will be a huge failure and there's not going to be a sustainability. The approach that USPA and the commission are putting on the table officially is producing, again, new platform for sharing the knowledge and the data and so on. This is not going to succeed anywhere. And Commission and EUSPA will present the platform, this new fancy platform, by the end of the year. This is not the way. So I'm really strict in that. And trusted entities, in this case, Mercator Ocean, has really to work with member state and end user if he wants a sustainability of the service. Otherwise, this will be a big failure. Thank you for your very clear and poignant message. Um, I will move on to uh, to Pedro now. Uh, he gave a really um, uh, interesting presentation from a very uh, private uh, perspective. Um, I don't see you, but I, I can see your shoulder. <laughs> um, De uh, Deimos was both in charge of managing the water issue pilot and was implementing one as well, uh, as you presented. Uh, you showed some, you know, pluses and minuses, but I, I, I wanted if you could uh, repeat with your experience, what was the key elements provided by eShape, so a program from uh, Eurogeo, that lead to the shift from the pil from pilots to sustainable services, and that could be implemented in the future for further sustainability. Hey, uh, thanks, Audrey. Uh, Indeed, I, I mentioned in my slide about the shape, uh, the importance of co-design for if I had to select just one point, that would be probably the one. Uh, we had a colleague from Hamins, which was developing her PhD at the project, and it it came with a lot of insights and a, a lot of uh, uh, new, new knowledge that uh, supported the work from all the partners. So co-design was definitely a very important aspect, but I want to highlight another one which I didn't have in my in my slide there, and it connects to what we are actually doing here in Bolzano. It's the community aspect, because when you put together a lot of different pilots, and eShape had a 37 pilots, and uh, we we can actually see the experience from our colleagues and learn with those. Uh, this is quite important. This cross fertilization between different topics is quite important. Sometimes I can learn things for coastal services that uh, uh, just by uh, watching some uh, presentation on agriculture service, 
So uh, the community aspect from E-Shape, I think, was quite important. And I'm happy to know that uh, we are continuing this with the Eurogel. And I think this uh, should be kept alive uh, uh, and with the action groups and everything else uh, really active so that we can learn from each other. I think that's a good way of uh, working. Thank you, Pedro. I think, yeah, that's a, that's a really fair point that, uh, that you're, you're saying that, and I think that's also the power of GEO and EuroGEO um, uh, work plan is that we're, we're trying to put together, you know, people to, to, to realize that the, the issues that we're facing for the land surface can be uh, helping the, the issues that we're facing for the ocean or for the atmosphere and so on. Um, so thank you very much for mentioning this. Um, Marion, uh, so I wanted to, uh, to ask you, um, the CLS, as uh, you presented as a private company, has put together an operational chain for monitoring sargassum based on both in institutional and private funding, including uh, E-Shape, but also Copernicus uh, money. How do you see this model being sustained in time and what are the le lessons learned from this implementation? Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks Audrey for the question. Um, yes, I, I think I think that so CLS is a private company and our core activity is to develop services uh, by valorizing the, the, the space data. Uh, so when we started to, to do the monitoring of the Sargassum, it is a part of this uh, of this uh, activity of developing new services. Uh, but uh, at CLS we also have another position. So we have a dual position in the space sector. Uh, as we are already providing data to the Copernicus Marine Service, so such as the sea level data, for example. Uh, so we are um, at the edge, uh, I would say, between the uh, already institutional aspects uh, of the data sharing, but also commercial aspects of developing applications. Um, so when we started to develop the Sargassum service, we realized quite early in the process uh, that um, there was this du dual needs, two needs from institutional and from private. Uh, and we also realized quite early that the, the private sector so uh, would not be able uh, to, to sustain on its own uh, the cost of the operational of maintaining the, the, the operational costs. Um, this is mainly because uh, the, the problem affects um, small islands in the Caribbean. Uh, so on their own, they don't have the, the, the enough uh, funding to, to, to sustain the full system, which uh, which answers the, the needs uh, at the regional level. Uh, and there may be some lack of uh, regional cooperation and coordination in the area, in the Caribbean and wider uh, area. Um, so it's difficult to um, to have to talk to a, like a re regional uh, cooperation entity. Um, so, so when we realized that so the, the private sector would not be able to sustain the, the system, um, then it, it became clear that we needed to probably um, look at both uh, um, both uh, type of sustainability. So one uh, going to the uh, institutional funding from Copernicus to answer the needs from the institu institutional um, and scientific sector, but also keep the, um, the, the 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 contribution from the private private sector sh should should remain because they are going to do some business about Sargassum. So we still need to provide them some commercial service to sustain their, their commercial activity. So I think it's it has to be uh, um, a dual uh, um, duality of the of the sustainability aspect. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I will give back the floor to uh, Muriel so she can uh, um, moderate the questions from the public. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. To to launch the discussion. Um, now we can have, we can answer some questions from the audience. Uh, should you have some? Okay. Or online, if uh, there is people online, you have to raise your hand and uh, or, uh, or ask the question in the, in the chat and we will uh, answer it. Uh, thank you. I'm Thierry Anchin. I'm from, I was the previous coordinator of eShape. So I, I had a very nice uh, introduction from this from uh, Predro, and I would like to have the feedback from Andrea on the, uh, the its view on Eurogeo and how he can imagine or recommend or uh, give uh, his feedback on the, on the different interaction we could have 
uh, within Eurojo with uh, national uh, activities and also with uh, you, uh, Muriel, for the Copernicus Marine Service, how we can organize the community and uh, support also the series of activity you have. Thank you. Thanks for the question. I was, you know, talking uh, during other people a speech with uh, um, Marco Mancini that was asking more or less the same question. The way we have uh, structured the National User Forum, but also you know the discussion with the uh, European User Forum is the fact that uh, we have some working table to discuss and Eurogeo can participate in this working table at national level. Actually, in the uptake strategies, all the member states have uh, uh, officially delivered a uh, white paper a position paper that we really asking not we do not want to discuss with the european commission we are asking the commission to set up a transversal funding uptake scheme where member states with the also research community can propose some uh, you know action to discuss for the evolution of the services so you know Eurogeo can make first you know, sort of like supporting this uh, proposition from member state and then participate uh, active. Of course, we are not, uh, let's say, uh, I was in Brussels last week. What we have said to the commission, member state don't want to discuss with the commission about like this possibility. There's a need. So we may need, we must need a transversal, uh, let's say, collaboration program between member state where also the scientific community, a Eurogeo is one of that, can really propose some bottom-up proposal that the commission has to take, so make the vice versa. It was a long, we have uh, you know, delivered this position paper in April. We have already discussed with the commission in, uh, in Stockholm for the uh, 20 years of Copernicus uh, in, uh, in the user form, we had another discussion last week in the user forum. So the commission was start, start to say, okay, let's put another discussion point in December. Member state have said no discussion. That is a formal request. So the position paper is official. It can be delivered. I, I think that if you go to the, I'm not the only uh, um, uh, Copernicus delegate these days here. There's the French, uh, the German one, the uh, Finnish one and so on. So this is a, a you know, position paper that can be shared. And, you know, supporting that saying to the commission, you know, also Eurogeo can really participate in an active way to this transversal. This has, you know, to be funded from the commission. It's a, you know, a strong way where Eurogeo can be officially involved in that. So that is my suggestion. Uh, I would like just to add uh, a, a comment about this um, coastal component finally. Yes, I, I mentioned that we have started to uh, enlarge the Copernicus Marine Service to the coastal component. Actually, what we discuss with the member states is how to uh, support them to develop these uh, national services. We don't want to replace the national services, but maybe help them to um, to evaluate or to ev to uh, to evolve. Sorry. And um, the, the idea is also that uh, when we discussed with the member state, that there was a, a need uh, for transnational collaboration because some member states have not the same uh, uh, modeling capacities and so on. And there is also a need to uh, support the, the transnational collaboration. And this is our objective. After that, uh, we don't... Um, our object objective is not that the, the, the National Coastal Service uh, pro uh, how, uh, become new providers of the Copernicus Marine Service. This is not the, the but if they want to share uh, coastal data on our platform, not maybe a secondary catalog, it could uh, uh, improve the uptake of a private sector or create new users of this uh, uh, high resolution data. And this is uh, our pur purpose to. Uh, uh, and hence uh, this uh, community of users. So. I'm just adding a, a quick question. The position paper is uh, called Transversal Collaboration Program between Member State and it, all the interested entities, first. Second, uh, Italy is really, uh, you know, putting in place national collaboration program with all interested entities, really making clear to the European Commission that 
if you work between entrusted, all the entrusted entities and the member state, then you achieved something. If you go to just only one entrusted entities, I'm always underlying EUSPA. We have nothing against EUSPA, but it's different. You know, EUSPA cannot take the uptake of the marine services or the climate services and so on because they were born for Galileo. And you can tell straight away that that's the background and still there. So you cannot do that. So there's and Eurogeo can be, you know, part of this scheme of transverse. Uh, there is a question. Maybe we have the mic. Yeah. Thank you, Marco Muccini from Politecnico of Milano. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Thanks, uh, Lux, for uh, your presentation. I think, uh, according to what Andrea was saying, uh, probably should be interesting if uh, a group of uh, I am hydraulic engineering, and uh, maybe we can uh, suggest uh, some operative uh, problems where I personally think, but I think the community think this, that the uh, data from Copernicus may really help. So let me give you two or three topic. One is, for instance, the, the coastal dynamics and how the interaction between estuaries and uh, uh, coastal dynamics may play. We generally do this with the numerical models, but uh, numerical models may be get information from, for instance, the plume of the two, the uh, of an estuary of the, the plume of a solid transport, a suspended solid transport provided by uh, a sediment to un, to a rivers to understand how behave the interaction between uh, the wave energy and uh, current energy, how play the role of the salinity in uh, this type of idea, so that we can assess parameterize our modeling that are in a way lab, numerical lab and that we use for design infrastructures. Another point and was curious about the next presentation, but I think it is canceled. It was about the a kind of early warning system for safe swim also during the summertime. Most of our uh, village on, on the Italian coast uh, are equipped with the drainage system sometimes that uh, during strong thunderstorms may provide a huge uh, mm, discharge of, uh, of a suspended sediment, most of time not very clean. And uh, this is not so that uh, the possibility to monitor this after the thunderstorms when the sky becomes clear again and uh, see where this plume of pollution moves may be another topic. Of course, according to what Lux and Andrea said, this is not an overlap on the uh, national uh, agency in charge for this, because for instance, we have ARPA, but it is a, a complementary activity because it is a kind of a service that you provide when the event arrive and not the scheduled as uh, the, for instance, our agency used to do to check the water quality. Thank you. Uh, finally, it was uh, a comment, not a, a question. Finally, what you mentioned is uh, the proposition of uh, new services uh, to, or um, maybe improvements of the modeling capabilities. No, my probably yes in the same way, but I try to put, I'd like to put on the table some uh, operative topics that a different uh, research group or, or operative group may collaborate to. And also this could help in setting some uh, ground spot where you can, uh, like we had, for instance, from a satellite, from a soil moisture stuff in the, but we can in a way replace something like this, some having hot spot or uh, observation spot where you, where people working from ground may concentrate their sampling activity with something like that. Okay, yes, I think that the land sea continuum is a, a very uh, uh, important topic uh, have a part in land and a part in, in, in the sea and uh, this is connected so 
there are a lot of topics to, to study. Is there an, another question uh, and online either? Wow. Yeah, there's another question. Ah, okay. Yes, we have five minutes left. Perfect. Ready to express myself, but okay, thanks. Okay, <clears throat> I'm Harris Condues. I'm research director of the National Observatory of Athens, and I'm actually part of the ESAP and Eurogeo uh, action groups, uh, trying to uh, open the forum to the Eurogeo action groups and uh, being in uh, better linkages with the different initiatives and, I mean, flagship programs of the European Commission for the benefit of both sides, for the benefit of the Eurogeo action groups and the flagship initiatives. I mean, and I see three terms here. Uh, of course, the Copernicus Marine Services, which is the well-known, I mean, uh, base actually, base uh, operations and services that are provided. The Marine uh, Hub, oh, maybe, I, I, I'm not sure, the, 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 the uh, no, uh, Marine Services Hub or something like that. The, and anyway. The Coastal Thematic the Hub. Coastal Hub, okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> and the um, Ocean Mercator. I mean, I would like to have a better knowledge about how all this, I mean, um, ecosystem of uh, uh, initiatives, actions, etc., is possible to be uh, linked with Eurogeo and how the uh, actors in Eurogeo could benefit from all these, I mean, different initiatives that are taking place. And I ask that because, I mean, we have in Eurogeo, we are supposed to coordinate the action groups and a big community of several stakeholders with all these different initiatives that are taking place. I, I don't know if it's my question that clear, but... Uh, uh, Okay, it's uh, it's you know it's 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 I mean rather uh, not so obvious to that to us. I mean, how we can bring all these different communities together? Okay. Yes, thank you. I'm not sure to have a comprehensive answer. Uh, actually, the 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 conference uh, today or these days uh, is the uh, uh, provide the opportunity to discuss to meet and. Uh, for me, the the each time you present something, you reach uh, new uh, new persons, and then you discuss, and then this is the first time we met, <laughs> and uh, I think that we we can start something. Uh, I I cannot describe all the ecosystem <laughs> of uh, all of this. I think that there is many initiatives because I think that the European Commission wants to uh, optimize the chance to reach uh, everybody. So I think that um, this kind of workshop and the discussion we will have uh, uh, tomorrow and this afternoon uh, is the opportunity to, to meet and discuss uh, all this topic, yes. Muriel? Yes, Audrey? Could I, could I just jump in uh, and answer maybe this uh, gentleman's uh, question? So if I understood, uh, the question was also how Mercator, the coastal, um, the coastal hub and Copernicus Marine Service kind of like work together and how this can be linked with Eurogeo. Um, I have a very simple uh, answer for that. Uh, basically, uh, Mercator implements the Copernicus Marine Service, also implements the coastal hub, the Matic hub, but also implements the European uh, Office for Geo Blue Planet, uh, which is part of the Geo Work Plan and um, which I am uh, the head of. And uh, I would I I couldn't travel and I'm sorry again to not being able to to be with you today, but uh, you can directly uh, contact me. Uh, Muriel can give give me give you uh, my contact uh, email and uh, and we can work together. But that's definitely uh, very high on my list for the the next um, chunk of our of our project is is to see how we can make sure that uh, Eurogeo participate in in all these these activities and how you know we are. Uh, feeding each other's uh, activities and aligned. So uh, I'm very happy about this uh, comment slash uh, question and uh, I'm looking forward to further discussions about this. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, is there another question? No? 
I have a very short one for you, Mohiyama, actually. <laughs> no, it's very specific. It's just because I'm very highlighted in his presentation, and I totally agree the, the, that these coastal environments are extremely complex. And as you started your presentation with uh, the Copernicus Marine Environmental Service of Team Kimems, uh, do you think uh, within the coastal uh, uh, the coastal services uh, new initiative, you will also integrate the land services and the emergency services like like he's doing at national level? Uh, I'm not sure to have un understood the the question. The question is about the coastal hub. Uh, yeah, it's about the, the the coastal hub. If it's only considering data coming from KMEMS, or if it's also considering land and and atmosphere. Okay. okay. So, uh, I've spent several months to discuss with the other interested entities uh, to uh, ask them uh, what were the most relevant product for the the coastal. Uh, uh, topic. So we have made we have worked together to to produce uh, to select use case product and so on to to feed the the, the coastal hub. And for the moment, um, it's not a funded uh, 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 activity. So we it's a proof of concept. So everybody uh, made made the the best uh, they can. Mm -hmm. But after that, we would like to uh, collect user needs, collect feedback about this hub, and uh, to to go on uh, further but we have discussed uh, many times with each other uh, together uh, to to select the product and so on okay thanks uh, is there another question no it seems that uh, we reached uh, the end of uh, this session uh, thank you to the speakers to come and the speakers uh, online Thank you, Audrey. Thank you, everybody uh, who joined uh, in this uh, room.